I believe that as designers, we all have a responsibility to make sure that the objects that we're designing and creating have either a limited negative impact or actually, as we try to do, a positive impact on the earth. Ultimately, designers, I think, should have to swear some sort of Hippocratic oath to do no harm because ultimately everything that ends up in a landfill site or everything that does any damage or harm as a product has come from someone who's designed it at its origins. So being both an environmentalist and a designer, I think, should be, you know, hand in hand. My name is Sebastian Cox. I'm a furniture designer and maker, and I consider myself an environmentalist. We design and make furniture working with British woodlands. Something like 90% of the wood in the UK is imported, and our business is set up to try and challenge that, look at what we can do with our homegrown resources, and also see the places that we harness resources from as ecosystems and habitats, rather than just places for commodities. So we're really interested in biodiversity, carbon sequestration, but also making really beautiful objects which last forever. Wood is the single greatest material on earth. It's strong, it's light, it's beautiful, it's warm to the touch, and it has this amazing property, which is that it's made of solid carbon dioxide. So because of photosynthesis, uh, the trees put on mass and matter, that, that is wood. And therefore we are working with solid CO2. So from a starting point, we are already sequestering carbon in the pieces that we make. And if we manage the forests well and grow the trees to replace the wood that we're using, we're actually having um, a positive impact on the carbon cycle. So the core principle of efficient land use in my mind is to see land as serving more than one purpose and that should be both the human and the natural worlds, the human and non-human worlds. In early 2020 we published a manifesto of land use called Modern Life from Wilder Land and basically it describes a wilder looking landscape. One solution that you could say to our biodiversity and climate crisis is just to say well plant more trees but land is finite so if we're planting more trees what are we planting that on? So we have to then look at all of the other things that use our land and try and understand how it's best allocated to give us the resources that we need, but also space for nature. So the manifesto was kind of all about trying to bring all of that together. And I argued the case and tried to work out all the data to show that we could be self-sufficient for our food, our fiber for like clothes and furniture and building materials. Um, and still leave space for nature if we think more carefully about how we actually extract resources from natural uh, resources like, like timber, for example. If we give a little bit to nature in a lot of the places that we're using land, we can have massive impacts in terms of locking carbon up in soils and vegetation and also uh, you know, giving a home for wildlife. And if we can do that and procure um, products and resources and food from that land, then it's win-win for everybody. So we're in a small park in South East London, which is a public space. I love this space because it's teeming with life. It's really small. You can see this is absolutely covered in bees and dragonflies. And these are sort of the things that you don't really associate with urban spaces. And that's why I find this place so exciting because it's just crawling with life but then also the people that live here really can feel the benefit of that. So the title of my uh, university thesis was Traditional as Radical. So the idea of radical acts really appeals to me and we need radical acts in order to sort out the mess that we're in. They can be small changes to what we're doing as individuals or they could be larger scale you know, governmental policy changes. And I think it has to be a push-pull between businesses, consumers and citizens, and government. But I think what we need is radical statements, radical ideas to make those small or large changes um, because it has to be a complete cultural shift. Harewood's a very beautiful place and I really enjoyed visiting there. Um, but one of the things that I've been really interested in is how manicured the grounds are in parts and I'm perhaps quite interested in challenging that idea and maybe trying to inject a bit of wildness into the immediate grounds around the house and perhaps getting visitors to think about the value of wildness as a beautiful thing rather than seeing the capability brown landscape 
So I'd really like to challenge the idea that aesthetic preferences of humans outweigh the needs and demands of the natural world. And I think Harewood's a really great place to explore that because we have that balance between wildness and tamed landscape.